What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It is the Earthmaster on this beautiful Wednesday, May 4th, 2022 date. It's about 10.55 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 3.2 earthquake into the area of the South America region once again. Still seeing some swarming activity kicking off in that region. That 3.2 occurring at 193 kilometers into the subduction zone. I'm going to start off first with uh, all the solar weather activity. It's kind of ramping up right now. It's been an interesting past uh, 36 hours or so. Uh, we've seen uh, multiple M flares kick off, including an X flare uh, just a uh, day and a half ago or so. And uh, things kind of ramping up. Look at this trend upwards from these uh, sunspots that are going to be rotating into view. We did have a... Uh, sunspot here, this little guy on the map. Let's see if I can bring him up. This one did produce a uh, M flare earlier, uh, but most of the activity, the strong activity occur uh, occurring on this sunspot around the southeastern limb area that is starting to rotate into view finally and looking at an amplified chance of some X flares in the coming days as the uh, dynamics here on the sun get a little bit more visible. This one here does have some intermixing of the polarity of the fields you can see the red and the blue uh, and all the uh, different colors they're kind of uh, tightly closed together that could possibly bring us uh, a large m flare or possibly even an x flare from that uh, dynamic sunspot there uh, looking at the uh, which sunspot is that let me see which one that's 3004 they haven't named this one yet here i believe that is the old old sunspot uh Someone mentioned there in the comments, I think it's 2992, made a round uh, trip back to Earth, at least as far as uh, facing the Earth here, this one right here. We'll see what it does in the coming days, but I want to check out and see exactly where the... Um yeah, these guys are a little bit behind in their data, but uh, I do know that the M flare, one of these M flares here, I believe it was the M, <coughs> excuse me, uh, M5.5, I believe, had come from this uh, Earth, Earth-facing sunspot, which is 3004. So, watching it pretty closely, it doesn't have to be a super big sunspot <clears throat> to produce a uh, significant flare. Uh, right now, we don't have any major CMEs or anything headed towards the Earth. Everything looks clear for now, but that's going to change, I think, in the coming days if these things do decide to pop off. Uh, some further flaring and uh, subsequent CME. Green across the board, far as the three-day geomagnetic forecast, that obviously is the auroras. KP indexes look pretty clear. I do want to bring up the sunspot activity. There's been quite a bit, right? We've seen some rather large ones, uh, and lots of, just in general, lots of sunspots picking up here within the past couple days, and this is all advancing towards the solar maximum. Uh, this here is the solar progress progressive map here progressing right progression there we go um of the sunspots predicted is right here in the red line that's kind of predicted here from the space weather prediction center notice this trend we're already starting early already getting up there in the number of sunspots so we're looking at a jump start i think this is going to be a little bit more active in terms of the sunspot uh, numbers as we advance towards the solar maximum um, and looking at, uh, this is historical data here, the date 1750 uh, through the 1800s, 1900s, solar maximums and whatnot. Uh, this one here, at least the predicted level, doesn't even look as strong as, say, like in the early 2000s or even um, la uh, last solar maximum, which is around the... 2013 range 2012 somewhere back there it doesn't show at least a predicted model doesn't show as strong of a uh, solar cycle but i think that's uh i don't know you know we can't really ac accurately 100 percent predict it but um we're way ahead of schedule and we're starting to climb up there here's the f10 uh 0.7 cm radio flux progression they use this map um to kind of uh run historical data uh, I can't remember exactly what this thing is here. I know there's a couple information. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here about it. Hold on a second. I'm not going to go into that. We don't need to go into a, a major science class here. But uh, even on this map here, looking at uh, progression values way up there, um, come the peak. But we're already ahead of that right here on this chart. We've seen that uh, pretty dynamically set up on the radio flux progression map. But I kind of like that. We're, like I said, we're way ahead. Uh, these guys, you know, I don't really look at forecasts because sometimes the sun does what it wants. But I was looking at this 27-day outlook of that uh, radio flux and geomagnetic indices map. And um, for the next 27 days, you know, and it's not 100% accurate, looks like towards the end of the month here, could be looking at some uh, pretty strong solar storms up around the KP index of 5. Um, which isn't even all that big of a deal. It's not a major one, but it looks like it could be amplified uh, towards the end of the month. And then again, this could always change, right? These sunspots have been popping up and uh, doing some crazy stuff here recently. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, sea flare looks like right now sea flare at a 80% chance. M flare 55% chance. X flare around 25% chance. So they have elevated this a little bit in terms of um, you know the uh, flaring activity so we'll see what it does right in the coming days once again the dynamics looking at these intermixing of the polarities this one right here doesn't have a whole lot of potential but this one does and can't really quite see all the dynamics here it does look like some intermixing of them we'll see what that does in the coming in the uh, definitely in the coming days let's go ahead and check out the earthquake activity just kind of wanted to cover the solar weather activity real quick because that's kind of a uh, really ramping up earthquake data uh, no major earthquakes out here recently um, but west coast activity appears to be lighting up uh, increasingly on the eastern part of the sierra nevada talking about south of the uh, lake tahoe area getting in on a little bit of swarming here looks like a couple twos kicking up near the uh, markleyville area Pretty shallow earthquake, so if you look at that, the uh, depths there, those are right on top of the mountains. Um, some movement also south of that area into Long Valley Super Volcano. We're starting to notice an in um, a trend towards the Nevada area once again, around the Mina Nevada area, Tonopah Nevada area, uh, getting in on that uh, that typical aftershock sequences that we see here from a couple years ago. We had that six pointer down here, starting to see that fill back in with some aftershocks and some microquakes. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, Southern California, Ridgecrest area also getting uh, pretty active and some movement here into the Southern California area on the Pacific side of the plate boundary along the San Jacinto Mountains and the fault systems down here. Uh, quite active in that area today. Uh, Northern California, let's go ahead and check this movement out here. I know this wasn't on the map last night. 2.5 near Blue Lake, never heard of it. Outside of Eureka and the Arcata area, 23 kilometer depth for that uh, 2.5. Way down there into the Cascadia, it looks like, into the uh, subduction zone. Uh, some movement here outside of Butte Falls, Oregon. 1.5 at 12 kilometers. Uh, and then as we head up north, a little bit of activity outside of Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and Seattle. Um, we'll go ahead and check out the trimmer map from last night and also some volcanic seismicity uh, maps. Looks like nothing being reported from the PNSN network uh, as of yesterday's time frame. Uh, volcanic activity here at Mount St. Helens. Uh, looks like a little bit of activity being reported here, but then again, these maps uh, have been showing quite a bit of activity with only very minimal reporting uh, from the folks here. So stand by for just a second as we get this up and running. Some uh, earthquake activity uh, overnight and this morning as well. Seeing these blue spikes, red spikes, black spikes here. Even these little bitty tiny ones here are little small microquakes. Uh, so still ongoing activity there at Mount St. Helens. And as you can see here on this map, had a little period of quietness uh, yesterday. It started to ramp up a little bit um, towards the evening. 
uh, but still no major significant movement, just a little microquake swarm that's been ongoing here for about a week or so now. Uh, into the Intermountain West area, Idaho and Montana. Some activity uh, up around Helena and down, stretching down into Yellowstone, it looks like. Uh, let's see what we got here in Yellowstone's map. I don't think there's anything significant to chat about here. Looks pretty uh, calm for the most part. A uh, little activity over here on the eastern side of the park. But again, I don't think that uh, showed up at all over here. Sometimes we see those odd earthquakes strike over here along the eastern part of Yellowstone. Uh, and I'm not for sure exactly where they're coming from. They don't show up here on the park. But they're a little odd because they are showing up. Uh, let's see, Texas, Oklahoma, got some severe weather happening out there once again. Out here around Pecos, Texas, a couple threes and some twos ramping up. New Madrid zone has gone pretty quiet, eastern part of the country as well. Puerto Rico, uh, just mostly confined to the uh, swarming area down here along the southwestern portion of Puerto Rico with a, uh, looks like about 15 earthquakes or so, mostly microquakes in that area. South America, of course, you've seen on the Earthquake 3D globe, a uh, pretty good in, uh, a pretty good deep movement of quakes here in the area, and we're starting to notice um, some buildup here north of Santiago area, along the subduction zone of the Peru Chile Trench. Now, this is more shallow earthquake activity, but we're getting a swarm of movement here in the area um, just off the coast of the Santiago Chile area. The 5.0, 4.8, 5.2, 5.1. Normally, when we see stuff like this, folks, it's leading up to something much bigger along the area. i got to remember, all this earthquake activity is occurring after all the deeper activity we've seen here over the last few days. So, um, you know, it's 500,000 miles away almost. Uh, it's still, it might be a long ways for us, but in, in plate tectonics, it's not. Uh, so, therefore, the buildup of pressure here has greatly increased. And we're starting to see that uh, with these four little earthquakes here. And I shouldn't say little, but four moderate earthquakes here off the coast. So I've got to watch this area pretty closely, uh, in the, at least for today and the coming days, uh, as we, you know, swarms tend to lead to something bigger, especially with that type of uh, those magnitudes right there. Down here along the South Pacific Ocean, Antarctica, uh, Pacific and the Antarctica Plate. 5.1 right here on the ridge. Over here in the Fiji Islands area, we have seen some major adjustment here with some deeper movement and uh, some activity up here around the Tonga Trench as well. Solomon Islands got a uh, 5.1 or Papua New Guinea, excuse me, 71 kilometers. And up here along the Mariana Trench in Tokyo, uh, got the Japan and the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. All these areas have gone absolutely quiet and the Indonesia region as well. A little bit of movement outside of the Greece area and up into Italy, uh, where a 3.3 struck there yesterday. Uh, let's see what we got. Earthquake Scanda was showing some movement up here along the north um, part of the Cascadia subduction zone. It looks like that's still kind of continuing here today. Uh, got uh, a pretty good cluster of quakes, not specifically on the Cascadia. That would be this blue line right here downward. Uh, but this is back over along the Pacific Plate boundary. So uh, definitely some activity ramping up here around the Cascadia, but not specifically on it. Uh, see what we got for magnitudes here in the red circles. Couple threes it looks like. 3.2 and some other threes up north here. So a little bit of uh, movement happening up there on the uh, Pacific side of the plate. Uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it right now, folks. I'm going to look into more of the solar weather uh, activity today and kind of get a comparison of uh, years past, see how the trends tend to, uh, um, you know, the trends tend to start early when it comes to a, a prediction center, a solar cycle prediction anyway, their little line on the map showing what they expect it to be. kind of want to get a comparison on years past when they've done that and seeing how uh, you know early starts like we're looking at right now you know with the significant amount of sunspots kind of want to see how that compared uh, in years past because things are definitely ramping up here with this solar cycle 
a couple sunspots to watch here in the coming days, folks. This one right here, uh, 3004, definitely aimed directly at us. It at least produced one M flare. I believe it was the M5 uh, that occurred, 5.3, I believe it was. Oh, that's the, uh, that's going to be that far side one. Let me see, 5.7. There it was. Okay, I knew it was a 5 something. But that's uh, 3004. The one that's pretty much uh, directly facing us right here. Uh, that one did produce an M5.7. Uh, no subsequent CME. Uh, not all flares do produce CMEs, but uh, when it's earth directed like that, uh, it does produce a CME. No doubt uh, it can be a geoeffective and uh, stir this map up a little bit. Alright guys, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone has a good day. We will be back uh, soon. If anything major happens, if not, we'll be back here tonight with the update video. So we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Have a good day.